So one of the things that's happening uh, is that to use Illustrator efficiently, you need a clearer black and white uh, drawing to work from in Illustrator. So one of the things you can do is go back over your drawing and marker to make it a higher contrast. And then if you want to make the whites whiter in the background evenly, you may want to do that with the dodge tool, which is this little thing over here on the side. Make sure it's the dodge tool. And then go up to the top where it says range and select highlights. And exposure can be really high. Now we want to make sure that the brush is really big so we're being efficient. Right bracket will do that. And this way we can just go over everything and get rid of all that lovely gray and make it very even and it's only going to take out the highlights or the light areas and not the black parts. You see it's going a little bit slow. There we go. And you should have a nice crisp black and white image to work from. That way you can save it and pull that into Illustrator instead of having all the gray tones. And that way you won't have it uh, be as muddy when you do some outlines. If you find that your lines are still a little bit light, you can do an adjustment layer and bring the blacks up and that'll make it a little bit stronger for you. But keep those whites white. You can see a little gray there and bring that back down. All right, so that should do it. Then we want to save that And you want to make sure you're saving it as a JPEG or a Photoshop document, but JPEG will work. And then you can close out of that. Yes, maximum size. Now, close, quit. I already saved a copy. All right, now, over here, we are going to Give ourselves a new layer. Blink these out of the way. Going to place that image on my artboard. Now, a couple of things. Did I just call it logo? Here we go. Once we place it on there, we want to make sure it's sized appropriately. It's importing it huge. Obviously, I need to make it bigger. I mean, smaller. So it needs to fit on my square artboard. Zoom out, command minus, hold the shift key down if you want your dimensions to stay the same. And make sure it fits entirely on your artboard. There you go. You can use your arrow keys to shift it around a little bit. And zoom back in, command plus, fabuloso. Now, here's the slick part. Object, live trace, make and expand. Yes, yes, large image. Okay, fine. What this will do is trace over this and give you your lines in paths. Now, the paths are fill, not stroke. All right, so it creates fills. Now, as we zoom in here, you're going to see that this has a line on either side, and over here, right, it's either black or white. That's not that's why it's not showing one or the other, because the white parts are also vectorized. To make this easy, click off of it, click into the white area, white area, okay? Then hit, uh, hold down the shift key, select another white area, and another white area, and another white area, all of the interior spaces, okay? Oop, one more, there we go. Now hit the delete key. Now if I click around the outside in the white space, you don't get anything. I can also click on the inside white spaces, hold the shift key down, and the eye, because this is open, was selected when I did the outside. And we can hit the delete key and clean out the inside. Now, what does that do for us? That gives us just the black. All right, there we go. All right. Now, we're still in fill mode, so we should have both sides of that. There we go. 
Now, you have a lot more points here than you actually need. If you were doing this for real, this would be one curve. Uh, but this will give you a starting point for your vector, and it will smooth it out and make it so you can work with it. So there's option number one for you. Uh, filling these becomes a little more difficult later, but we can work with that. This will give you one starting point. Do that for one layer. Do another one where you try and do some of the outlines yourself and see what you think. That's probably your best bet. Okey doke.